One year ago, I began interviewing a group of prostitutes living in an abandoned truck yard in Hunts Point. This is their story, The Yard Blues. It's an area of our borough well known for prostitution, and driving through the streets of Hunts Point, you can't miss them. On any corner, on any given day, you'll find a woman willing to sell her body. But even when they're in the streets surrounded by people, they are alone. They're tired of being alone. They hate to be alone. It's terrible. Because I'm so alone. You know what I'm saying? I'm really out here and I'm alone. But who is she? And why does she do it? Last summer, we met Patricia, 44 years old, in and out of prison for drugs and prostitution for more than half her life. She calls the front of this truck home. Watching the trucks because the guys around here, they strip everything, you know, they, they take parts and shit off the trucks. So um, they turn around and. Um, they asked us to watch it. Well, they asked me to watch it. So that's how I got um, allowed to stay in here. But Patricia does not live here by herself. This lot may look like a junkyard, but inside these trucks live a small group of prostitutes who admit to selling their bodies mainly to buy drugs. Hunts Point has a reputation for drugs and prostitution, a neighborhood isolated between the Bruckner Expressway, the Bronx River, and the East River, home to industry like the New York City Terminal Market and the Fulton Fish Market. Day and night, women are soliciting customers on its streets. Sarah sleeps in this flatbed with her partner, a dog she calls my nigga, and her cat, Lucy. Sarah says her aunt first encouraged her to sell her body when she was just 17. I was just learning. My, my aunt was teaching me how to do that. Your aunt told you how to do it? Yeah. What did she tell you about it? How to this do and the prices and everything and where to go and everything. She taught me that. Now 30, she says prostitution isn't something she set out to do with her life. It's a way to make money to support her addiction. Crack. 33-year-old Delilah is also a regular visitor here. Having sex for a living isn't easy, and she tries to distract herself. Taking care of business and then, then the process of the feeling, it's something you can't help if it starts to feel good, even if you don't put no mind to it. And I hate that because when that happened to me before, I cried afterward because I felt disgusted with myself. Patricia's experience is different than Delilah's, and she's been at it decades longer, as the harsh reality of her occupation shows on her face. You know, after being out here um, all these years, you tend to close down anyway. You know, you don't, you don't feel nothing. It's about the money, and it's about the, when you're going to get that next bag and that, ne that next hit, and that's why you do it. You feel absolutely nothing. Sarah's out on the street looking for a customer. Her dog follows in tow. She believes he's protecting her. That's, that's like a big risk we got to make, though. You know, we get in the car and see me. I, I got a good personality. You know, I like to make people laugh and everything. But it's a big risk who you get in the car with, you know? Some people, some guys you meet, it's good people. But others aren't. The guy punched me in my face, and um, it felt like my jaw was broken. And... Um, I came back here, and I just sat in the truck for three days. Um, I couldn't eat. I still basically only eat rice and gravy right now because I can't really chew. Rape is another cruel reality in a prostitute's life, a fate all three women have experienced. Every time that happened to me, I went to the police to, for them to help me, and their response was, oh, well, you shouldn't have been out there. Sexually transmitted diseases, and the most feared of all, AIDS, are also a risk. The women claim to always use condoms, even during oral sex, but they say there aren't any guarantees. I've been getting tested for a while since I've been out here, and it's always been negative. So I don't really... I mean, um, God forbid it happens, I might lose my mind, I don't know. When you need that drug, you take that risk. Each has a different way of going about her business, but the transaction always begins the same. Getting into a vehicle and establishing a price. And that price, Patricia says, continues to go down. Years ago, it was nothing to get like 80 $100 for a blow job. Now, they want to give you a hard time by giving you $20, $40. You know, because I guess all the drugs, the girls get so strung out, whatever, they you know, we'll do anything for nothing. 
But with strangers, there are some limits, boundaries, and territory. You see, why don't turn tricks in where my man's at? Because that's very disrespectful, though. Even though we live in the streets and shit, you know, that's still my man. I don't disrespect him, he doesn't disrespect me. Not where I live at. I don't think, you know, you shouldn't show nobody where you turn tricks out there, you know, where your area is at. Before becoming her boyfriend, Al was one of Delilah's customers. He says he was cruising the streets of Hunts Point looking to pay for sex when they met. He hates to see Delilah with clients called dates or the other men she sleeps with, but he believes what they have is special. Hey, what's up with you? She spends more time with me than any, any of her dates. It's just one, two, three of her dates uh, compared to we could spend two, three days without her being out here working together, and it's just me and her. Al believes he's been sent by the spirits of Delilah's father and his brother to watch out for her. Both men were addicted to drugs and both died of AIDS. Delilah remembers her father's promises. I know he used to tell me that he would put me in beauty pageants when I was little, that one day he was going to put me in beauty pageant. But those days are gone. I ask why she's willing to risk her own life for her habit. She's at a loss for words. I have, I can't, I don't know, like I said, I, I'm so tired, but I don't know why am I still in the same place. Her addiction is powerful, and knowing how her father died isn't enough to stop her from shooting up. I feel it run through my veins and through my body, this little warmth. And next thing you know, I'm just starting to get real relaxed, like so comfortable.